So now the question is how do we determine the standard electrode potential? What are standard reduction potentials? Now we've defined it. We know that the standard reduction potential is the voltage, right, of a half cell relative to the voltage of a half cell or an electrode relative to the standard hydrogen electrode at 298 Kelvin, one atmospheric pressure using one mole per decimeter cube solution, right? But now we're gonna now we're gonna see how we determine the standard electrode potentials. Okay. So let's say let's say that I want to determine let's say that I want to determine the standard electrode potential for zinc. Okay. So I want to determine this standard electrode potential, right? That is Zn2 plus plus two electrons. Okay. Gives me zinc. Okay. So I want to determine the standard. I want to determine the standard reduction potential for this for this reduction equation for this reaction. Okay. So again, what we want to do is we want to determine we want to determine the standard reduction potential for this equation here for this half equation, right? You know that the notation that we use for standard reduction potential is this e naught. Right? So we want to determine this value. So here, of course, if you look at the zinc half cell, if you look at the zinc half cell, right? We have this half cell. We have, we have a metal in equilibrium with its ion, right? So we're going to use a zinc electrode. We're going to use a zinc electrode, right? And the zinc metal, right? And here we have our electrolyte will be one mole per decimeter cube solution of Zn2 plus ions. And we want to determine the potential for this. We want to determine the standard reduction potential for this guy, for, for this for this particular reaction. So we're going to connect this. We're going to connect this electrode to the standard hydrogen electrode. Okay, that is our standard reference point. That is our standard reference point. Okay. So here we have a voltmeter. This is connected to the standard hydrogen electrode. Right. So in the standard hydrogen electrode, we have this. We have a platinum electrode. Right, we have an inverted gas cylinder. We have an inverted gas cylinder, right, through which we're delivering, through which we're delivering hydrogen gas. Right? So we're delivering hydrogen gas. Right, and then we have, obviously, hydrogen gas is being delivered at one atmospheric pressure and two ninety eight Kelvin. Right, the hydrogen gas at 298 Kelvin, one atmospheric pressure, right? And then obviously our electrolyte will be one mole per decimeter cube H plus solution, okay? Our electrolyte here is one mole per decimeter cube H plus solution, right? One mole per decimeter cube H plus solution. And obviously to complete the circuit, we also need a salt rich. So here we have a salt bridge, right? Salt bridge. Now, of course, we want to determine the standard reduction potential for Zn2 plus here, right? And we know by definition, we've defined the standard reduction potential for H plus, right? By definition, we've said that the standard reduction potential for H plus is 0 0.00, right? So here we have 2H plus plus two electrons giving us hydrogen gas, right? And this by definition is assigned a value of standard reduction potential of 0 0.00 volts. Now we know from our previous knowledge that zinc is more reactive than hydrogen gas. So zinc will lose electrons more readily than hydrogen gas. Where in other words, zinc is a better reducing agent than hydrogen. So if zinc is a better reducing agent, it will undergo oxidation, right, relative to hydrogen. So over here we can say that electrons will go from zinc towards, electrons will go from, from the zinc electrodes towards this, towards, towards the hydrogen, the standard hydrogen electrode, right, that platinum electrode that we have. This is our platinum electrode, which means that, which means that obviously over here, zinc, is undergoing oxidation, right? It's the reducing agent, and H plus ions are undergoing reduction, right? H plus ions are undergoing reductions. They will be the 
they will be the oxidizing agents. An observation we can make that's consistent with this is the fact that the mass of this mass of the zinc electrode will decrease over time because zinc is reacting to form aqueous ions over time. Okay, that's our anode, right? That's our anode because you have oxidation taking place over there, right? Loss of electrons. So over time, the mass of the zinc electrode or the mass of the anode will decrease. Okay, and over time, you will also see bubbles of hydrogen gas form at the cathode. And that's an indication that H plus must have been undergoing reduction. And if the mass of zinc is decreasing, then zinc must have been undergoing oxidation. Okay, so this is your cathode. So based on this understanding, we can say again, we can say that we talk about we talk about reducing agents. Talk about reducing agents, right? If you're comparing these two, we can say that we can say that zinc is the better reducing agent than hydrogen. And when we're talking about oxidizing agents, when we're talking about oxidizing agents, we can say that H plus is the better oxidizing agent in comparison to Z and Q plus. Zinc undergoes oxidation more readily, it's a better reducing agent than hydrogen. Right, it's more reactive than hydrogen gas and H plus ions gain electrons or undergo reduction more readily than zinc ions. Okay, so H plus ions are better reducing, but better oxidizing agents than zinc ions. Right, they undergo reduction more readily. Now, as experimentally determined, the EMF of the cell or the voltage of the cell was determined to be 0 0.76 volts. Okay. 0 0.76 volts. From this value, we can determine the standard reduction potential of zinc. Okay, it has a magnitude of 0 0.76 volt because this half cell has a value of 0 0.00. Okay, so this is going to be either negative 0 0.6 or positive 0 0.66, right? So the question is, which one is it? Is it positive 0 0.76 or negative 0 0.76? Now over here we know that we know that H plus ions are better oxidizing agents than Z and Q plus ions, right? And we know that the standard electrode potential or the standard reduction potential is the measure of the oxidizing strength. So here we can say that Z and 2 plus ions are weaker oxidizing agents than H plus ions. So therefore the standard electrode potential for this should be negative, right? It should be more negative than this or less positive than this, right? Now obviously if this is zero, then this will be negative, right? So then we can say that the standard reduction potential or the standard electrode potential for Zn2 plus, okay, will be negative 0 0.76 volts, okay, it will be negative 0 0.76 volts. Another way to, another way to like so, sort of learn this or understand this is that, is that when we talk about standard reduction potential, the standard electrode potential in this particular case, we know that. In this particular case, we know that the zinc electrode is the negative electrode and, and the hydrogen electrode is the positive electrode, right? So what we can say is that what we can say is that that when we talk about we know that zinc is losing electrons more readily, right? Zinc is losing electrons more readily than hydrogen. So therefore, this reaction, right? We know that the we know that this reaction has you know for the standard hydrogen electrode the standard reduction potential is 0 0.00 volts right and we know that this reaction is taking place spontaneously right and obviously if the standard reduction potential is negative 0 0.76 then the oxidation of zinc that's the reverse reaction right is going to be positive 0 0.76 volts and this if you just add up the two half equations, right? If you add up the two half equations, we get the overall equation that is Zn plus 2H plus gives us Zn2 plus and hydrogen gas, right? And here we can say that the overall EMF of the cell, okay, the overall EMF of the cell is equal to, is equal to 0 0.76. That's just, that's just the sum of the potentials of the two half equations, right? So that's your overall EMF. So again, what we can say here is that when connected to the standard hydrogen electrode, right, the zinc electrode is the negative terminal 
and we also know the EMF of the cell. So we can say that zinc has a standard reduction potential of negative 0 0.72 volts. Okay. So again, the magnitude is given to us because again, this, this value is determined relative to the standard hydrogen electrode, right? And then to figure out whether it's negative or positive, we just look at the terminal. We know that zinc is the negative terminal, therefore E0 will be negative 0 0.76 volts. Okay, that's one way to memorize it as far as standard reduction potential is concerned. As far as understanding is concerned, we know that Zn2 plus is a or H plus is a better oxidizing agent than Zn2 plus. So therefore, the reduction of Zn2 plus is not as favorable as the reduction of H plus. So therefore, the reduction of Zn2 plus has a standard reduction potential of negative 0.76 volts. Let's say I wanted to determine the standard reduction potential or the standard electrode potential for the following half cell. Okay, I have a copper 2 copper half cell. Okay, so I want to determine the standard reduction potential or the standard electrode potential for this half cell. Right, so what we're going to have here is going to have a copper electrode. Right, and I have a copper electrode. And then our electrolyte will be a 1 mole per decimeter cube, 1 mole per decimeter cube copper 2 plus solution. And of course, we're going to connect this, right, in order to determine the standard electrode potential for this, right, we're going to connect this to the standard hydrogen electrode. So we're going to connect this to the standard hydrogen electrode. Okay. And what we have is we have the following, right? For the standard hydrogen electrode, we have this guy. Right? And then we have a gas delivery tube. Right? We have a gas delivery tube through which we are delivering hydrogen gas. Obviously, this will be at 298 Kelvin and one atmospheric pressure. And of course, over here, over here, our electrolyte will be one mole per decimeter cube, the one mole per decimeter cube H plus solution, right? One mole per decimeter cube H plus solution, right? So that's our electrolyte. So something like hydrochloric acid, for example, we can use, right, one mole per decimeter cube, H plus solution. Obviously, the electrode here is made of platinum, right? So we have a platinum electrode. And then in order to complete the circuit, in order to complete the circuit, we know that this has to be, right, in order to complete the circuit, we need a salt bridge, right? A salt bridge could just be a piece of filter paper soaked in saturated potassium nitrate. Right, so here we have our salt bridge. So we have our copper two plus copper half cell, and then we have our we have our H plus and hydrogen half cell, right? And that's a standard standard hydrogen electrode. And we want to determine the standard reduction potential for copper two plus, right? Forming copper metal. So this is the standard reduction potential that we want to determine. Okay, we want to determine the standard reduction potential for this, right? This is the value we want to determine. We also know that the standard reduction potential for the hydrogen electrode, for the standard hydrogen electrode, right, is defined as 0 0.00 volts, right? So this has, this has a standard reduction potential of 0 0.00 volts. So over time we observe over time, we observe in this particular reaction that the mass of this electrode, the copper electrode, increases over time. Okay, and we also observe that the blue blue solution, right, the color, the blue color of this copper two plus solution fades over time. Okay, which is telling us that copper two plus is undergoing reduction. Okay, it is the oxidizing agent in this reaction, right? Whereas, whereas hydrogen is undergoing oxidation, okay? It is the reducing agent. So copper two plus is the oxidizing agent, it undergoes reduction, and hydrogen gas is the, hydrogen gas is the reducing agent, it undergoes oxidation, okay? 
So, these are the two half equations for the for the reactions happening in in each of the half cells right. We have hydrogen forming 2 H plus plus 2 electrons. Again based on the observation that the mass of the copper electrode is increasing over time we can say that copper metal is forming over time and based on the fact that the blue solution the blue color of this copper 2 plus solution is fading over time we can say that copper 2 plus is undergoing reduction to form copper metal ok. Hence the blue solution fades because the concentration of copper 2 plus decreases and the mass of the cathode increases as copper metal deposits right on this electrode which means that electrons are being accepted by the copper electrode right. Electrons are flowing from are flowing from the standard hydrogen electrode right. Hydrogen is losing electrons towards the copper half cell right. Copper 2 plus is gaining electrons and we know that since reduction takes place at the cathode right this would be our cathode right? and oxidation takes place at the anode right. So, we have gain of electrons reduction taking place at the cathode and loss of electrons right taking place at the anode right that is oxidation. And we can say that when we look at the different oxidizing agents present here right we have two different oxidizing agents present here. We have copper 2 plus and H plus ions and the better oxidizing agent is copper 2 plus ok that is the guy that undergoes that is the guy that undergoes reduction in favor of H plus ok. So, as far as oxidizing agents are concerned copper 2 plus is a better oxidizing agent than H plus ok. And as far as reducing agents are concerned reducing agents undergo oxidation and we know that hydrogen gas undergoes undergoes oxidation more readily than copper it loses electrons more readily. So, we can say that hydrogen gas is a better reducing agent than copper. Over here we find that the EMF of the cell we find that the EMF of the cell is equal to 0 0.34 volts ok. We find that the EMF of the cell is 0 0.34 volts that is the that is the reading that the voltmeter gives us. And we want to determine we want to determine what the standard reduction potential of this uh, this half equation is right or this 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 cell copper 2 plus copper half cell and we can say that we know that it will either be negative 0.34 or positive 0.34 right now again based on our understanding we know that copper 2 plus is a better oxidizing agent than H plus ok copper 2 plus is a better oxidizing agent than H plus. So, therefore, the reduction of copper 2 plus is more favorable than the reduction of H plus and therefore, the standard reduction potential or the standard electrode potential will be more positive. Since the reduction of copper 2 plus is more favorable it is a better oxidizing agent the standard reduction potential will be more positive than that for H plus and obviously, if this is 0 0.00 this would be positive 0 0.34 volts ok. So, that is the standard that is the standard reduction potential for this half cell is positive 0.34 volts. Another way to think about this is that we know that the electrons are flowing from the standard hydrogen electrode towards the copper electrode right. So, this is our negative terminal and this is our positive terminal and we know the EMF of the cell is 0 0.34 volts and since this is positive the standard reduction potential will be positive 0 0.34 volts ok. That is one way in which you can memorize it right that whatever whatever the charge on the terminal right if it is a positive terminal the copper one then the standard reduction potential will be just the voltage so it will be positive. So, again when this electrode is connected to the standard hydrogen electrode because of the positive electrode it will be positive 0 0.34 volts, but conceptually because the reduction of this is more favored to the reduction of H plus right we know that this will have a standard reduction potential of positive 0 0.34 volts. Now, if you look at these individual half equations right we know that for the cathode our electrode potential is equal to positive 0 0.34 volts right because we are just looking at the forward reaction here right and then for the anode it is just 0 0.00 volts right. So, for the overall reaction we have 0 0.34 plus 0 0.00 which is 0 0.34 volts ok and the overall the equation for the overall reaction right the overall equation that we have is we have copper 2 plus reacting with hydrogen gas to form 2H plus and 